Hey guys, this is Josh from AkambataTheme.com. I was just uh, going to go through today kind of like the startup and the first couple of things. Um, what I have is a clean install with nothing including uh, any menu. There's no images, just the hello world. So what you need to do, like first place, go into the dashboard. What you want to do is go down and you can install Akabato. So you just go into themes, go to add new, upload choose your file and then go ahead and install it and then it'll take you to Akabato as being here and then it's going to ask you to update basically and get your subscription and yep and I have to cut that out once you're here you need to go over here what I would do is <clears throat> by default I would just remove the reviews unless you plan on doing them and update because you don't need to have them if you don't plan on using them and then what you need to do is go into settings general make sure you put in your title tagline addresses are all there I would make sure this is unchecked for anyone set your time zone I set my week to start on Sunday every time and then what you want to do is go down to reading this should be defaulted to home and defaulted to blog And you move it through, you can check these. This is where you can change from uncategorized to another category as your default. So if you have like a main catch-all for your posts, then you can switch it here so that a post will always be assigned this if you don't assign it anywhere. The next um, one of the most important ones is permalink. When you're in the permalink, you just want to go ahead and switch this over to post name, which will get rid of any extra uh, slash information in there. So you won't have any months, no dates, no uh, structure in there. Um, <clears throat> Depending on the person, sometimes some people actually prefer to have the category here and then post name. So this would be like, a, this would be getakabato.com slash uncategorized slash post name, which can be you know helpful to you, but it's not necessarily needed. I tend to just leave it as post name and then hit save. Now permalinks will be saved and ready to go. Next thing you want to do is you come in here. You can go ahead and upload your images. Remember to keep to this ratio if you want them to display correct. And then the fav icon, if you don't do it in here, it won't be applied. This is what actually applies it to the overall. There isn't any <coughs> view in the customize. Um, I always check mark this for show primary navigation on desktop so that way you get a normal desktop icon. So once I save this, when we go back over to the desktop, you'll see that there's no X anymore. It'll just show the items that are there. So you want to make sure you just turn that on. Uh, for most people, that's probably the best way to approach desktop. Uh, Anti-bounce, I'm not a big fan of necessarily. I do like showing this show entry meta on post is underneath the title where it shows, you know, your name and date written on and what categories it's in. And then whether you choose to enable comments or not, I tend to leave them on when I'm going to be monitoring. This is just my test site to do uh, these kind of videos on from a, a reset state every time show featured images is right underneath the title to show you the image that you said is your featured image if you decide to and then obviously the custom CSS is where we put everything to customize our website and then you have header and footer JavaScripts that you can add I choose not to because I can't control what they look like I rather install the plugin to manage it and make it uh, look nice and then at the very bottom is where you can actually change that menu icon label. So instead of hiding that text, if you had that hamburger menu, you could just delete this and then you won't have any words there anymore. When you're done, you want to go ahead and update. Then you can go over here to the footer, the copyright text. So if you want to put in any, some, uh, anything very specific, this is where you can make a change to it to make it very specific for you. And then the ad space for you to run an ad. That'll bring us over to the home page. And in the home page, typically, most people should probably have the hero section because this is kind of like your main driver to try and get people to a specific post, a specific pillar, a specific um, article on your site that you think is of super value to everybody. And then it gives you the ability to put in specific text, a specific button text, and then the link of where it's going to take you to, and then add an image. And the feature tiles is kind of where it gets interesting. Uh, people seem to either love it or not that interested in it. You can do a lot with them, but right now I'll leave it off. And then recent articles, you can actually change this. So where it says the recent post, 
you can change this. I'm just say mine, right? And what you'll see is up here, this is now mine. So that's how you can get those things changed if you want to change the text itself. Also at the bottom, this is check marks is how you would uh, include those reviews into the home page. So into this recent post section. If you check mark these and then save, these ones will actually be available inside that menu as options for people to view. Next, we'll move over to the sidebar. This is that About Us section, so the section that's over here, which basically is the header, which you can change, the image, the detail that you'd like to put in about you over in that section, which typically short and concise, and then a button if you'd like to actually push them over to your About page, which is um, somewhat important. It depends on the person. Uh, I would suggest to do it, but I, I would suggest it's kind of on a site-by-site -site basis. The legal information header, uh, you can do it here. Um, the other way you can do it is to dump it into like the sidebar ad, and that way it'll be further down the page, um, allowing you to do a fixed uh, table of contents up at the top maybe. So you can do the table of contents here, and add your headers as you go through here and that way you could uh, possibly get a table of contents higher or uh, since we now have access to the widget we can put a widget in and then I believe the widget is below this so instead of putting all of this in here you could actually put the legal information into a widget and put the about into a widget and that way you would have a table of contents at the top so you could have an actual scrolling fixed table of contents. So I'll make a video on that probably later today or tomorrow. Um, as for SEO, when people highlight over this and you get that title, this is where you want to set that up. So here you would just do a basic site title and description, right? This is also where you want to add your Google Analytics code. So this way you don't have to run that script. You just go grab this UA code off of Google and just put the code only into here and you'll be fine and it'll be tracked. This also gives you the XML sitemap so you can copy it and paste it in to get it tracked inside Google Search Console. What you'll see now is if you go refresh, now it's changed to get Akabato today, which is what we set inside here. So most of these settings are really fast and easy. They're quick to set up and quick to get going. Uh, I mean, right now, at this point, we are basically fully ready to go. If we upload images, we have a site that's ready and already ready to publish. And we'll dive into some real customization of the entire front page to make it look less like Akabato itself, just because I've heard from people that, it, that it's very easy to distinguish out uh, Project 24 sites and members by the use of the theme. And I'd like to show how it's possible to easily get around that. This is Josh. Um, please like and subscribe if you found it interesting. Um, Akabato itself uh, is a $99 lifetime license, which means you'll never have to buy it again. You can use it on as many sites as you want. It's really inexpensive for the value it can give you, especially if you're aiming to produce um, niche-based websites where it's going to be mostly blog content and looking to uh, give you an income that's consistent. There's not a lot of other options that are as quick to get up and running to get you publishing because in the end, <clears throat> for your site to be successful, it won't matter how pretty it is. It won't matter how much time you spent assembling all the data. What matters is getting your content built, published, and available for everybody. So this is Josh. I'm signing off for tonight, and hopefully we'll start in with a series of how to fully customize and build this from the ground up. Leave comments if there's anything you'd be interested in me adding that you would like for me to build into this in this display and we're going to move through i think the next day what i'm going to do is just put in some placeholder data with that plugin and then we can start to flesh out the customization of the home page itself to make it appear more custom and more aligned to um a th an overall theme maybe you'd have for your niche if you if you ran all peach or you know you liked teal we can do a full custom layout to make this yours. And that way, your site will look like you when people come visit it. They won't go, oh, that's definitely Akabato, which is how I want to help today. I really want to start getting people away from just this plain white, you know, 
plain Jane setup and give you the ability to turn it into something that would be beautiful and helpful for the long term. Well, thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.